KLS, The Lola Show. Hello and welcome to The Lola Show. It's the new year, new resolutions and new beginning. We cannot but revisit the unfortunate accident, the fire that resulted from the debris created by an explosion that burned down the larger part of northern Lagos and created a panic that spread to other areas. As people fled the flames, many stumbled into a concealed canal and were drowned. The explosion and its aftermath are believed to have killed at least 1,100 people. We are here to discuss what the government has put in place to better prepare the citizen of Nigeria on how to deal with disasters, how to get information, and how to better prepare for such disasters. With me in the studio is His Honorable Kendi Bamibeton, the Executive Chairman of the AGBO, Local Council Development Area, LCDA. It's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Kendi Bamibeton. Thank you for coming to the show. Hi. Well, we're going to get to the serious point uh, because the Lagos uh, Amri accident, uh, which happened 11 years ago, uh, it actually happened on the 27th of January, w which was an accidental detonation of a large stock of military uh, ammunition and high explosives. So we don't want to go into New Year without uh, remembering what happened. And we want to find out what Nigeria has to look forward to, whether the country is now ready. It should anything of such magnitude happen in the future. So stay tuned with us as we go on break. We'll be right back. As you know on TLS, we are not here to discuss problems. We are here to discuss solutions. And so His Honorable has afforded us his time to discuss what the government has put in place should there be any unfortunate incident in the country. What is the information method that the Nigerian government is putting in place. As many people fled the flames, many stumbled into concealed explosions and its aftermath are believed to have killed at least 1,100 people and displaced over 20,000 people with many injured uh, or rendered homeless. What has been done to improve the safety since then? The problem at that time was that when people heard the, the explosions, right. people began to move to the nearest point of safety. And for many of them, you know, they moved towards the canal. Uh, that is the canal, the, what we call the Okia Canal. In the air, the fire. Uh, people moving from Oshodi, uh, charity areas, Mapoluku, all of them are moving towards the canal, believing that if they could cross the canal, uh, they will get to areas where the bombs will not get to because you have to recognize that when these bombs were being detonated they were flying in the air. In the air. You know, they were dropping on roofs and roofs were getting, getting blown. You know? So the idea was the farther you could get away from those incidents the better. So uh, uh, as they were well, unfortunately by the time they got to the canal because they saw weeds on it they assumed that the there, there was some level of uh, 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 regular regularity in the in the soil, so they they, they moved into it like that, mm -hmm. and that was how many people you now got uh, stuck, you know, right there. And as a, a set of a hundred people moved, another hundred moved over them, and so you could now see how oh, layers and layers of people got trapped in there. And uh, before we realized it, you know, the old Lagos at that time wasn't clear to anybody. At the beginning, people thought it was a coup. The government itself was uh, agitated, you know, and it took time before even the government found out that it was not a coup, you know. Okay. And then from there, the, 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 the Lagos State governor at that time, uh, Ashwaji Bala mentioned, you know, now to go on there to let people know that what, that what was happening was not a coup attempt, but you know, bombs, you know, being detonating themselves, essentially. Nigeria are looking forward to a better new year ahead. So, what are the what are put in place? What are those uh, um, societies, or should I say, uh, organizations that are put in place to inform the citizen? Should any 
accidental or even even any I mean God forbid any an another bomb explosion should happen or even this all these attacks all across the country. But in, in terms of in terms of how do people <coughs> get information? The first because you thing. said they were thinking. Why yes. thinking? They shouldn't be thinking at this point. There should be information. Yeah, the information came rather late. You know. Um, about 6 p.m. later that day. When Six, yes, it happened this thing started, started around uh, 12 noon and half to noon. And the information and about came six to hours you. later, you know, uh, it became clearer, you know, that this was not a coup attempt, but there was uh, bombs being submitted. What happened to the information system? Well, <clears throat> the point basically is that with the way and manner it happened, you know, okay. the NTA had to come, come in the NTA. Uh, uh, the press, uh, an emergency okay. uh, press briefing was organized on the NTA uh, where the governor came to address people and to assure them and then you had the, the, the director of the military also coming in there to assure them that no, the problem was not uh, about um, uh, was not a coup, but that was the most important thing that people needed to know at that point yeah. in time. That, because this but is we're looking forward to a new year. Yes, we need to know what is, what is being put in place. Now that that that's where I'm coming to. Okay. Uh, that canal. One of the one of the conclusions of that incident was that it was important to build a bridge over the canal, mm -hmm. so that if perhaps I mean perventure something that like happens in the future, people will have somewhere to cross over because if they had a bridge to cross over, they would not be stuck in that place. The people of Ijibo SCD, we are very very happy that that bridge has now become a reality. You know, yes. uh, we now know that in terms of disaster management, you know. There is more opportunities now for people to cross over that canal okay. than it used to be. That's the first major derivative or deliverable uh, of that system. Okay. The second is that we are better sensitized now to disaster management than before. Okay. Uh, 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 I, I think it's, if you notice what happened during the the the, the last uh, flood on, on uh, uh, yeah. in Lekki yeah. and uh, uh, Victoria Highland, you could see almost immediately, you know. All, all the radio stations you know, uh, picked it up and were telling people, move, move, you know, this flood is coming, it's going to run over your house. And, on the you know, day or the... On the day, right? Why, why the, why the, Are why there the, any management uh, agencies to... Of course, there's, to, there's, to there's, there's Lagos, State, uh, Lagos State Emergency Management uh, Authority. Or well, an it, impending it, disaster. It, it, well, in terms of early warning, early warning systems, you know, uh, we have developed better early warning system than before now. Uh, you have the, the regular uh, flood reports, you know, uh, for example. Uh, you have the regular, as far as the, the natural disaster, what it's easier to predict right now okay. that there will be heavy flood, you know, yeah. there will be heavy rains. You know. okay. But this kind of disaster is not natural. No. And I don't, I don't, I don't know other it than... An, it, was yes. an, it was an accident. It was an it was accident. Major, but yes. It was intended to happen. Yes, okay. yes. But, uh, but even though, even up to now, the military has not been able to come up with a report of why those bombs... Designated. We do not have a report. So should we anything we happen? What should Nigerians look forward to? Where should I get my information? Well, from the authorities concerned, first, you know, uh, you expected, for example, that the military authorities ought to come out first to say, look, we are having a problem here, you need to take steps A, B, C, D, E. You know, uh, that's yeah. false. And then, of course, they also need to let the government know immediately. Uh, that means the state government, you know, to know uh, that this is what is happening. And then, of course, the emergency services uh, um, bodies at state level, you have the legal state emergency services. That's what I understand. Then, at the federal level, you have the national emergency management agency. So where do we the two of them. Do we turn our televisions on? Should there be any? I mean, of what course, is the process? Of course. Is what I'm trying to get at. Should there be any uh, displays of what forbid an attack on Nigeria? Uh, there, what is the agency, what is the medium to use? Because like in the United States, because we keep going back to the United States, they have FEMA, Federal Emergency, Emergency yes, yes, Management yes. Authority. Right. We expect them to come on and tell us if there's going to be tornadoes, can they, yes, they have uh, yes, agencies yes. that, that uh, warn, yes, warnings. Yes. So what is that agency that an average Nigerian should be tuned to? <coughs> in Lagos State, it's Lasema. So which medium do they use their information? They have their call, call lines. You know, they have call lines. Okay. They have 767, for example, in Lagos. You know, you can call 767 and you'll be attended to promptly. You know, uh, uh, the 911 is the world one that all of us know about. You know, it still works. You know, it works and in Nigeria. It works here. You know, so 
these are lines that you can also call if you get into this kind of thing. But, than uh, but the, 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 the agencies, La Sema and the NEMA, are also very, very aggressive in, in their approach. You know, because I mean, when it happened, when it, we had a national disaster in Ejibo recently, uh, when uh, about 50, or 150 houses got their roofs blown mm -hmm. up, you know, by a, a hurricane kind of thing, you know, they, within four hours, you know, both NEMA and La Sema were on ground. You know, and that tells us of that we have learned from the experience of uh, the Janet and Seven. And that is good news for us. Please stay tuned with us as we go on break. We'll be right back. As you know on TLS, we are not here to discuss problems. We are here to discuss solutions. Learn what to do, who to call, and what the government's role is in getting information out should there be a disaster. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're just talking to Mr. Kende Bambeto, Executive Chairman, Ejibo Local Government Development Area, which is in short LCDA. Thank you for coming on the program. Pleasure. Yes, we were talking about what Nigeria has to do. Should there be any uh, accident or future uh, mishaps? Because we are all looking forward to a brighter year ahead, and with Nigeria need to be informed. As you were saying, that there have been institutions put in place to in order to manage disaster in Nigeria. Has this been effective as, as far as you're concerned? Well, I mean, <clears throat> my experience is that in the last uh, couple of years, when we've had climate change use, yes. you know, and um, we've had cases of uh, flooding, heavy flooding, uh, we've had cases of um, uh, heavy winds, wind storms, blowing roofs. Uh, we've had, we found that the NEMA and Lasema, we found them to be very, very highly responsive. Uh, in the case of HBSED, for example, I woke up one, uh, one night, one, one morning in February, and found out that there were 150 uh, houses in the local housing estate had gotten their roofs blown up. And, they, uh, and we, we alerted uh, the SEMA, we alerted NEMA. In less than four hours, they were there. And we together, we were able to take stock you know, of you know, those who were affected. We, we, <coughs> we, we divided the, or the, the plots into various categories, we mounted tables. People who had who were who are, who are affected came. We recorded, you know, about 187 uh, flats that mm -hmm. were affected that day, and we were able to transfer all the all the data to the Lassema office and to the, to the governor, mm -hmm. you know. And that uh, that uh, made me understand very clearly that uh, they were they, they knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And very uh, later down, we, we got some reliefs, you know, both from NEMA, uh, iron 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 sheets, you know, and things like roofing sheets, and. Uh, overall, you can say that it was well managed. One of the good things we were able to do uh, on the occasion of the 10th anniversary uh, was how the government, the government was so interested in it that he set up a committee uh, comprising local government and the state. And uh, at that committee level, we were able to achieve at least four things. Okay. One, um, all the, the, the victims you know, who had been agitating over time, uh, they had the, the loss of their breadwinners that uh, caused them economic and financial reverses uh, were given uh, lump sum amounts uh, so that they could at least uh, measure up with their, with, their, with, their, with their lives. The children, the, the dependents of the dead uh, family people uh, were also given scholarships, you know, and that has also made, meant that they can go back to school and they can graduate and uh, uh, forget the past. Uh, the fourth, of course, is the uplifting and elevation you know, of the graveyard into uh, a memorial uh, uh, area, a tourist destination. And that also meant that people who want to know about this event now today can go there. The, 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 the names of the victims that could be identified uh, have now been post, put there and for, 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 for memorial purposes. Part of this you know. is that it, sh it should never happen again. Yes, I wonder yes. whether is that a part of the plan that this kind of uh, uh, yes, and, and, and I think the way it was managed, the way, the, the experience we went through uh, on that occasion um, made everybody realize the need for the early warning system. Yes. So when you find that the 77 is working now, I mean, any time, even 12 midnight, if you call 77, you will find that you will be responded to promptly, you know, and whatever you ask for, you know, something will be done. And you also find out that the scrolling, you know, the most, once an event is happening like that, you find that they take advantage of the scrolling on most of the television uh, screens. Mm -hmm. You begin to find, telling them, look, 
you know, these are steps you need to take, you know. For example, when flood is coming, it has to, if you're in down area, if you're in a low line, land area, move to upland area. You know, vacate where you are so that the flood zone meets you where you are. So these are <clears throat> early warning systems that have been developed based on the experience that we have had. Do you think Nigerians are hopeful, looking forward to a greater new year? We'll answer this when we get back. CLS, we are not here to discuss problems. We are here to discuss solutions. Learn what to do, who to call, and what the government's role is in getting information out should there be a disaster. Hello and welcome back to The Lola Show. I have with me, of course, the Executive Chairman of Ejigo Local Government Development Area, Mr. Kende Bamibeton. You were just about to tell us what Nigerians should look forward to to the new year. Yeah, in this new year, we have no other option but to be positive, yes. uh, be, be aggressive, you know, uh, wish ourselves the best, and go after our destiny. Do you think there's much to hope for? There's a lot. This land is a land of opportunities, you know. Um, look left, right, and center. Things are happening Do in this country. Do you believe someone can work really hard and make... Yeah, sure, make sure. Idea. Because uh, uh, in a land of opportunities like this, you know, all you need is to have your brain and to be ready to put your hands to work. In Ejibo, for example, I visited your area and there are so many developments. And of course you were praised by the Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola for, your, uh, for the work and then for your influence on the people of Ejibo. This is your second term. Congratulations. Are you going to run? I mean, there's no third term, I'm sure. There's no third. Are you, are, do you have your eye on a, a, a higher level position? Well, we have 24 months to go, so there's still a lot of work to do. There's still a lot and, of work. And, and my position basically is that uh, when the time, when we've done what we can do, uh, then the people will show appreciation by telling us where they want to put. If I call an average Ejibo resident now, what would they say about you? I mean, what do you think the perception of, of your work is? I think they would say that I'm making an effort, okay. that I've made efforts, that I've um, have created a vision of where we need to go to, mm -hmm. uh, to have Ejibo where, you know, the main link roads, you know, can be done. And can can be taught, you know, uh, to have it where children, you know, in public primary schools can have the basic things that they will get in the public schools, you know, in terms of environment, in terms of facilities, you know, and to have a health system whereby uh, anyone who is sick can get free drugs in all our health centers, can get the basic services without having to pay for them, you know, uh, those are the key areas: infrastructure, you know, health and education. Here in, on those three ones, I'm very, very particular about them, and I know that we have had a value in those areas. And also to also develop a community that is together, you know, that has a soul. Street boys, you know, who really had, were, had were <coughs> dropped out of school, mm -hmm. and then uh, were not well taken care of by parents, you know, and so we just, in that environment, you know, it was a depot, it has a host <coughs> depot of the NPC, yes. so a lot of business, business can be done. A lot of uh, so, so we now say, look, how can we do? We brought them in, and then we engaged them in the revenue collection, you know, uh, Okada, Marwa, and we found out that when they get on the streets in the morning, 6 a.m., they walk to 6 p.m., they have to make a little money, you know, they go to eat, they go to get be happy, and then they go to sleep. And before they go to sleep, all of us are able to sleep, yes. you know. So there's a, the, 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 the crime rate dropped. Uh, people, because they are engaged, it's, it became very difficult to just recruit them for violent purposes, for robbery and things like that, people will respond more when they have a better vision, when they have a better quality of thinking, you know. And that's all motivated, you know, uh, free GCE. Uh, all the things that we are doing is to try and raise the quality of human life, of human thinking, you know, uh, in, their, in their environment. Believing that it's the human being that change society, you know, change the environment, you know. Okay. So that's basically why we are so focused on making the Ejibo resident better than we met him. And this is the TLS, in case you're just joining us. I know you haven't. You've been listening quite intently to... Uh, um, he doesn't want to be referred to as the Honorable, which is you still are Honorable, Kane if I'm getting But he likes to be referred to as Mr. And you have a popular name called K-O-K. -K. What's that stand Ah, it's just my initials, Kane the other that word, color the well, actually, it came when I was in school, and I contested 1984. 
and I said, knock out kleptocracy. Knock out, out kleptocracy. Kleptocracy. So they call it K O K. What is kleptocracy? It's stealing by the government. You know, that's the way you keep stealing government. So Nigeria money. really, and I, as an average Nigerian, again, I speak on behalf of some of the Nigerians, and they're saying, should there be at peace to say that this, my leader, you are, uh, you just bribery free? I believe so. I believe so. I believe that's what that has been my my main call. You know that it is possible for us to run uh, the the government without having to spoil our hands. Mm -hmm. That uh, government officials, if you keep your life low, if you keep your life basic, you will not need you know to get your. I, I find you really quite approachable. You know, I, with my girlfriend, I came to, we came to visit you, you. and then uh, you were quite humble and down to earth on like the Nigerian term of do you know who you are talking to? I mean, what what motivated you from when you were a child to to be just close to the people as possible? Well, you don't really find that. Well, I mean, I mean, I come from my, my parents were teachers, they were you know, teachers. you know, so that meant that we we were always involved with people, you know, and uh, we were taught to be humble, we were taught to the, to respect people, and we understood the fact that even though a family produces a child, it's the community that brings up the child. So with that kind of societal consciousness, you know, you need to recognize the fact that you were just a servant, you know, and this is an opportunity, it's a privilege to serve, you know, and, as, and it's for three years. So if if you were arrogant for three years, what would you do after you left office? You, know? <laughs> you, can, you couldn't keep just being arrogant. Yeah, right. So you keep low. You have and less you, friends. You have less friends. How about work? How did you, when you got to where you are now as a chairman? You see, journalism also helps you in a way. You know, okay. you, 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 that's the only profession, I think, where <laughs> you are having breakfast with the president in the morning. I know. And in the afternoon, you are talking to a mechanic, you know, <laughs> and a mechanic shop. So it demystifies power. Right. You know, it makes you get the feel of the environment of power hmm. that you don't need to all these trappings you don't need what, what is your one good advice or two may i say that you can give to a listener right now who wants to become like you because most of them have this impression or miss miss uh, information that to be wealthy in this country you have to be a politician well you see the point is you need to set your conscience set because your conscience. conscience is always telling you that what you're doing is not right. This is your second term going, and hopefully we'll get to see you more in, in uh, powerful places. It's been yeah. such a w <laughs> That means you have your eye on the bigger seats. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> we will, be, of course, be ready to cheer you up, because uh, I was at uh, your area, and I was highly impressed with uh, your work. We thank you so much for coming to this show. And come, thank you for the work you're doing for the Ejigo local government. And of course, to Lagos. And then we extend it over to all of Nigeria and Nigerians everywhere. You make us proud. Thank you for coming on the program. It's a privilege, man. And I hope I can come back again as a day. This is the beginning of the year. So you must we'll make sure that you come back again before the year is out. Thank you.